In this video lecture, I'm going to show how to use an iterative manual or by hand method to numerically solve uh, for the uh, DC operating point of a circuit that contains one nonlinear element. We have represented the otherwise linear portion of the circuit as a Thevenin equivalent um, comprised of a voltage source Vs and a resistor Rs. And so our circuit really has just three elements. We've drawn the load line for our, uh, our Thevenin network and it can be has an equation uh, for the voltage that is V, I'll say VT for the terminal voltage if it were disconnected from the nonlinear element we would describe a current IT and a voltage VT and uh, that voltage VT is equal to VS minus the voltage drop across the resistor Okay, and then we've also plotted the uh, VI characteristic of this nonlinear element, which we've chosen a cubic uh, relationship between voltage and current. So here's the approach. Uh, we are going to uh, start with some initial current guess. All right, and I'm going to place it a distance away from the solution. The solution, of course, is the intersection of these two curves. We're going to project this current up to the load line, and we will calculate, let me write this over here, so start with I1 guess. Okay. And then we will calculate a voltage V2 which is going to be the voltage on the load line corresponding to that current. So it will be Vs minus Rs times I1. Then we will take that voltage and project it over to the nonlinear uh, curve of our nonlinear device. We will call that I3. And I3 will be equal to, well, we need to do a little work here. We've got to, let me, um, let me actually change the color on here to help make it maybe a little more associated with the particular line. Okay, and let me rewrite the current in terms of the voltage. It will be the cube root of Vx over Okay, so we will write I3 will be equal to the cube root of V2 over K. Change this color. Okay. Now we will once again project down to the load line where we will have a new voltage, call it V3, okay, at this point here. V3 will be equal to Vs minus Rs times I3. And we continue, we project over to the nonlinear curve and we get a current I4 where I4 will be equal to the cube root of V3 over K. And you can see we can continue this process uh, and as long as we're going in the right direction, uh, which happens to be clockwise in this case, uh, we will converge, and we will quickly uh, converge. So it doesn't take too many iterations. It's getting too crowded in here, but this is, all right, one more. This is V5. V5 will be equal to Vs minus Rs 
times i4. Okay, and so we basically are taking subsequent or previous computed values and plugging them in for the subsequent um, equation. When we do that for uh, the problem, this is f for the case where um, RS is 5 ohms, VS is 10 volts, and K is 5 times IX squared cubed. We'll find uh, the following values. If we start with uh, I1 equal to 0.5 amps, okay, we'll find a V2 is equal to 7.5 volts. We'll find an I3 is equal to 1.145 volts. I'm sorry, I realized I just, I skipped, uh, this should have been V4. V4 and V6. And I5. Four, I five. Okay, so this is actually I three and I five. Yeah, one three five two four B two four six. Okay. Sorry about that. So V four then would be four point two eight volts. I5 would be equal to 0 0.949 amps. V6 is 5.254. And we see this progression from uh, 7.5 volts to 4.28 volts to 5.25 volts to 4.92 volts to 5.03 volts to 4.99 volts if you keep going and eventually it will get to 5.00 volts okay so that is the iterative method now uh, a caveat on that is that if we have Let's say the load line here, call that, give it a slope M of the um, ML. And if we have our curve, I'm going to draw it as a straight line for a moment. But uh, so this is our nonlinear device, and we'll say it has an MN slope. Okay. Then if we try to go around in a clockwise direction, we find that this thing actually blows up. Okay, now notice in this case, if you're looking at, if we look at the, the slopes, we have uh, M, M, L, the magnitude of M, L is greater than the slope of MN. And in that case we want to go counterclockwise. Alright, so if we start here, then we'll converge in. And if we have the opposite, where we have a steep MN and a lazy ML, then we'll find that uh, we want to go clockwise. Okay, so in this case we have MN, the nonlinear slope, is greater than the linear than the linear slope. Okay, this is in the vicinity of where the uh, the intersection occurs. 
So what happens if you were to uh, go the wrong way? You'd find that these numbers you know, diverge rather than coming together, and then you'd have to uh, start out. You'd have to go the other way. And what would it mean if we started, uh, if we started, so in this example here, this is an example of going clockwise, right? And in fact, um, we could have the exact same system, but if the load line was um, something like this, right, where it's really steep, we would find that in that case we actually would want to reverse and go counterclockwise. So what would going counterclockwise look like? We would start with an, uh, an I1 where we would, we would assume an I1 and then we would calculate uh, a voltage based on that. And so our, our voltage, the voltages would be computed from the nonlinear element. Okay? And we would use for the load line, we would compute the currents. So we would compute I's equal to Vs minus Vx over the resistance. All right, and if you go in that sequence, so notice the form is like in the clockwise direction. We are using the load line to express voltages always, and we're using the nonlinear element to express currents. If you were to go counterclockwise, then it would be the opposite.